Hello, everybody, and welcome back to, well, hopefully welcome back. I guess if this is your first episode, we are the Knights of the Pages Library. I am Bo Knight. With me, as always, is Ryan Knight. Ryan, how are you doing? Uh, good, and you? Um, just fine. <laughs> so today, we are reviewing Alien 3, which is Audible Original, and it is the unused script for alien three and it is a little bit different for us because it's a dramatization instead of just a regular audiobook so it's kind of a different it's a whole different vibe like it has like music and then multiple characters are it's like it's like they're reading the script in front of you it, it's basically everything a movie would have other than like the picture part you you hear things like they're going on in the background and stuff like that yeah it's essentially just like listening to a movie basically other than there's a few spots of like narration just so you don't get completely lost. Oh, but even then it still has like sounds and stuff that are Oh going... yeah, for sure. That's what I mean. That's what it feels like to me is just like you're like listening to a movie in the background. You're just not watching it. So, yeah, so it's actually fr it's fr it's free if you have Audible. And I think there's actually more I was looking. I think there's more they're doing more alien stuff from Audible only. Oh, okay. Interesting. So this might be part of like a series of things. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it, I, I don't know. I don't know where to how to attack. Talk about this first. Like, what's well, the best way to approach this? Let's uh, let's get the usual stuff out of the way real quick. Um, so this is let's see, it is two hours and sixteen minutes long. So it's very this is short. Pretty short. Yeah, about the. About the length of a movie, I guess, would is about probably exactly what exactly that, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. It was uh, um, written and published this year, so I mean, this is this is hot off the press. That's I think that's why it was featured on the Audible original stuff too. Is well, the script wasn't written this year. I think that like the dramatization part. Yeah, of it. yeah, yeah, and that's that's what I meant is that this this particular audiobook was written and published this year not necessarily that the yeah the script itself was um, it's, it's it's the unused script because there is a whole other alien three and this has nothing to do with that yeah and i didn't even know that i mean Me i had already listened to it and you told me that so yeah that my mind well i was talking to somebody about the book and they're like the movie does nothing like that i was like oh i didn't even okay weird because because it is the unused script so this is the first time they're using it i guess huh. well that's kind of a cool i guess that's kind of a cool way to do it it's i'm sure it's a lot cheaper than making a movie so <laughs> and I, I i would it's it's sci-fi horror i mean if you've if you've seen an alien movie you kind of know what to expect here there's monsters yeah that's pretty much exactly what it is it's sci-fi horror um with extra drama because so yeah what we normally like to talk about you know is the narrator and how the narrator does if they are able to make or break the story but you can't really do that with a dramatization like this because like i said before it's literally like listening to a movie you have every person is voiced by a different person so you have a ton of narrators technically and, you know, I think actually the dramatization part of this is actually really well done. Yeah, and I I personally haven't listened to many dramatizations. Um, the first one that I ever listened to was actually The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I'm the glad day. you mentioned that because I was going to mention it if you didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the first one I had ever actually listened to. And I thought that one was very well done. Yeah, and I, I, yeah those were good sometimes the dramatizations I feel like are more engaging than just a single narrator reading you a book. Cause it, cause like, like Bill mentioned, it has, it has noises in the background and there's, there's music going on all the time. And there's things that are 
that are helping with the pacing. And... Well, and, and there's one part where there's a guy. One of the guys is in the in a vent, and he's talking to another guy outside the vent. And like the guy who's outside the vent talks, and the other guy talks, and it sounds like he's in a vent talking to him. Like I thought that was really cool. Like, yeah, I think they did that a, part is really well done. They did a super good job about stuff like that. So I like that too when they're like putting their helmets on to get ready yeah. to go out, and they're talking normal, and then all of a sudden you hear like this little, and then and then yeah. it, and then it sounds like they're inside it, like. Yeah, you know, they did such a good job of that too. So yeah, I thought so that I, was that very, part of it is, very well done. And I, I don't, I wouldn't say this is easy listening. Like to me, it, it, the whole time I was like, this is so, it's pretty gripping. Like I had a hard time putting it down because it's like it's like a movie. You know, you just want to, you just want to see what ends up happening. Sure, sure. And uh, this, so this is, uh, this is free if you have Audible. Obviously, that's how a lot of these Audible originals are. Is I think they're just doing like the like five of them a month or something like that. They are free, right? I th- I I think they're almost free forever. Like if you have Audible, I think you're right? And I think I'll they're always to... so they're like the way I think about them is like a Netflix original for Audible. So that like if you have Audible, you're always these are always available to you. Yeah, and I think you're probably right. I might have been just looking at that wrong. Maybe it just cycles through them on my phone just to kind of show you what new I think they do have features for like each month okay check out this this new audible original right and I think you're exactly right well and I think what confuses me is those featured ones sometimes it says like choose two free so there's like books that you might normally have to pay for sometimes they pop up as yeah they do that too right anyways I'm getting off topic I was just (laughs) In this book, if you don't have Audible, is uh, is nine dollars. <clears throat> hey, I'm gonna five. be honest. I don't think it's worth nine bucks. I also think that's a pretty steep price, in my opinion. So, oh, I'm not. It's not well done, and it, it probably costs considerably more to do a dramatization than it would cost to do a standard audiobook because yeah. now you're paying quite a few people to come in on their own, you know, on their time and do narrations and you're paying a guy to edit in all the noises and, and however they do that. So it, I'm sure it costs more to make, but $9, I think for this one is, is probably a bit steep. But I would say if you have audible and you're a fan of alien, then I, I would say this is for you. For, yeah. For you, for sure. Bingo. And I would say, even if you're not a fan of alien, because I mean, I don't even know if I've seen the other the first and second movie all the way through i mean i wouldn't call myself a fan but i do you like uh, sci-fi though yeah and i think this is just a well done sci-fi in my opinion or hor- if you like horror too if you're a fan of horror i would say this is also a good book for you yeah and this this book did a pretty good job of that of like they do a good we, job we'll, it's with- we'll get to it yeah okay that's that's fair um this one I would say though is not uh, if you're prone to daydreaming while you listen to a book. I would say this one is not super hard if you miss a part to get back into. Oh no! I mean, Just, it's like it's like your standard Hollywood movie. Like you're not you're not really gonna. There's not like subtle things going on in the background that are relevant later. Right. I would just say though, be prepared. There are a lot of names, and they're very hard to keep straight. So yeah, but I mean the different voice actors helps, and they did a good job except for a few parts. I noticed I caught myself being like, "Wait a minute, who was that now? What just oh, happened?" Yeah. I, that like, happened to me a lot <laughs> because, like, like we said, it's literally just two people talking to each other instead of so and so said. Well, they well, are pretty good about being like, "Freaking Richard, what are you doing when yeah, this, when you and, hear stuff?" And I think you have to do that in a dramatization for that yeah, reason because. Because it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So I, I would say I give this one like two thumbs in the middle. Like <laughs> it's not bad, but it's not great. Yeah, yeah, and I would I'd, I'd agree with that too. I'd probably give it like yeah, one thumb up, one thumb in the middle. No, just one thumb up. Not. not <laughs> it doesn't even get the the minus. No, not even two thumbs. Um, and I, I think know. for the sole purpose of. It's it's well done for a dramatization. The, I I agree. I think the dramatiz the dramatization part is is really good and really engaging, but to me the story is very very weak. Uh yeah, and I would I 
Yeah, I fully agree with that too because while some parts of it I did like and I thought they were kind of unique, I started thinking about it and I was like, eh, it's kind of just like all the other ones, all the well, other movies. And, so. and I mean, we'll get to it more, but like the the like quote unquote like t- twist or whatever like that happens in the middle, I was like, what? 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 Like, yeah. why? <laughs> Who would let that happen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'd say I agree with that, that the dramatization is done well. And for anybody who's, you know, doesn't listen to audiobooks or something like that, uh, I wouldn't set your expectations off of, like, a dramatization because it's a yeah. whole different ballgame. Yeah, but it is not the same experience at all. No, but this one is well done. Um, this, this is more like... I think of this more like it's like a it's like an action movie, but a book. Yeah, and an action movie that tries to to keep that kind of pacing, which yeah. I think is hard to do without. I mean, I understand the point is probably to let the listener create the visuals in your head, but if you're trying to do something else while you're listening to this, you you don't necessarily have time to be visualizing all of the things. Every yeah, minute and it, it is a little bit overwhelm, like a little bit overwhelming, because there are a lot of things going on at once. Yeah, um, but then I I would agree as well that the um, the story is 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 where this one lacks. So. So yeah, I'm. And with I'm that, you get into spoilers. Yeah, segue, segue, segue. Yeah. <laughs> into the <laughs> into the uh, spoiler wall, so we'll just. We're going to go ahead and talk about the whole story right now. So if you haven't listened to it, go listen to it real quick. I would recommend listening to it. I will go ahead. Yeah, and I mean, it's only two hours long. Yeah, I so mean, it's pretty quick. I definitely wouldn't recommend paying for it, though. Just do no, if you have to pay, I would stay away. Yeah, just do yourself a favor. Just get Audible. Yeah, and... it, it, seriously, if, if you want, want this book that bad, it's only nine bucks. Audible is only like 14 bucks a month. Exactly. So, yeah, by the time you were to buy this, you're most of the way to a subscription. You, you you could get this book and then another free book that's probably like twenty dollars and you paid for it. Boom. There you go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You haven't listened to it, go listen to it and then come back and we're gonna talk about the story now. Yeah. So I think the book starts really strong because it, it, it like picks up from a is that one? No, it's the end of two. Oh, it's the end of two? Yeah, so it's like directly in the progression, I believe. So it picks up right at the end of two where like uh, Ripley and the kid are like the only ones Newt, alive. Newt, her name. Newt, yeah. And uh, Bishop, the... Right, that's the not... artificial human. Yeah, the android dude. No, don't... Oh, yeah, they don't like being, being called <laughs> Um, yeah, and so it, it recaps her fight with the queen alien at the From end From Bishop's AFC. perspective, yeah, though. That's right. It is told. Uh, and a lot of the, if I would say there is a narrator, it is Bishop through this. For, like, the first, like, one-third, and then it kind of, it, it like, weirdly switches to, like, a ev- like everybody's perspective. Yeah, but I noticed if there's any spot where we kind of need a little bit of clarification yeah bishop, it's bishop who, yeah it's bishop who comes back in and is like these two people were talking over in the corner while i, I was just like <laughs> whoever does bishop does a really good job yes very His good voice job. is amazing yeah it's like butter he does a great job too of because he is an artificial person yeah he, him, yeah He's not. He doesn't like put like a ton of emotion and stuff into. No, it. and like what he says is kind of funny. Yeah, I thought that was very well done. So yeah, we pick up. And yeah, so and the queen like impregnates Bishop with a, I didn't like a like a different type of alien. See, I don't know because I know there's a ton of lore surrounding the alien stories. Yeah, but I it's, don't know it all. Well, and it's literally got I've. I fell down a rabbit hole one time on YouTube oh, you watching, yeah, I'm watching like alien lore from that alien universe. And to be honest, I'm more confused now than I was before I watched them all because 
it's it's almost it literally is like the the uh uh the pixar timeline type thing oh like okay, I see what you're saying. so and everybody has their own opinion about it so there's so many different opinions on the alien universe and how it all works that i have no idea so i don't know if this was a i'm assuming it was a standard face hugger that she impregnated him oh with. that's right yeah, that's right so he like gets impregnated and then these people like they i don't did they break onto their ship uh kind of the ship kind of like lets them in i guess because there's there's like some conflict going on between these two different people and they're like entering space where they're not supposed to have weapons yeah and there's this treaty of these people that uh the ship that the salako that uh ripley and new and bishop are on well and is there's another guy isn't there what's his name um Oh, dude, he's a big part of the book too. I can't even. Yeah, remember name he's, I just remember he's the military guy. He's yeah. the he's the marine. And he, uh, anyways, they. Oh, Hicks, that's his name. Hicks. Right. Yeah, it's Hicks. <clears throat> they, um, yeah, they enter this space area they're not supposed to be in because they, after the events of of two, they get in the Sulaco, and they leave. They're gonna go back to Earth, I assume. <laughs> they but, don't really say. They just like go into hypersleep. Yeah, it was kind of weird. Yeah, so they all go into hypersleep. Nobody has to stay awake to steer the ship, apparently, in the future. <laughs> Dude, and, it's the future, obviously. But the ship totally doesn't do what it's supposed to, and it gets too close to this to this place. Well, I thought it was because the ship was messed up from the Queen. It was messed up, and then, as we'll talk about in a little bit, there might have been a little tomfoolery going on as well. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> And so they get boarded by these people of the – it's like some union for the – And Benick is narrating like the ship is talking. Like he hears the, the freaking – the people like hail the ship, and then he, he can't do anything though because he's in cryo sleep. But it's oh, like yeah. all from his perspective, and he's like all messed up. He's, he's, yeah, he's like he in half, ripped, right? He got ripped in half, yeah, by the yeah. queen. Did you say Benick? I think you meant what? Bishop. Bishop, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Benick, Benick is from junk. Why did I even say that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, Bishop. Um, yeah, so this is where we're kind of getting this weird like narration from Bishop because he's in cryo sleep, but he's artificial, so he's not sleeping. So he's awake, so he's kind of telling you what he sees from inside his little sleep pod. And I kind of like that part that, like, he, that you kind of like get like half information like from the ship and then from Bennick at the same time. Yeah, I thought that was really well done when the the ship is also like talking. It has like yeah. an intercom thing that it's like talking like to itself essentially. Yeah. It's just cool. And the the parts with Bennick are actually really good. Bishop. Bishop. Yeah, why well, keep saying Bennick? <laughs> I don't know. Dude. <laughs> but it's it's fine. Yeah, Bishop. I know what you mean. Yeah, and so those guys, I don't, I don't understand why they were getting. Were they like looking to loot the ship? Well, they, they, well, they were military, and the Salaka was not supposed to be there. So. Oh yeah, that's right, and they, they had no choice but to get boarded. That's right. Yeah, that's that ship was coming to intercept them basically and figure out why they entered that space, and then lo and behold, the chestburster burst out of bishop because apparently the queen impregnated his artificial body and that works totally fine too i guess but and, they, they like try and explain that a way that like the alien dna adapts so fast that it can that it would be able to implant it into bishop that like yeah. that, that, that it, it, it adapts so quickly it doesn't matter as long right. as it has a host which is it didn't really make sense to me no not at all <laughs> i guess because 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 story yeah and, and so uh, the face hugger comes out and the guys are like trying to kill it and when they're trying to kill it they accidentally get the acid blood on one of the guys and so it gets on his face but that part didn't make sense to me i thought i thought if you wounded it enough to bleed wouldn't it be dead i thought so but apparently it only takes like a split second to impregnate you yeah but see does it impregnate that guy I, see, I didn't understand this part at all because, like, that part happens, and then they cut to 
the Sulaco like showing up somewhere else, right? Like they're at a uh, anchor point, yeah. Right, and they like confiscate uh freaking Bishop and all the people that are on the ship, and they like are interrogating them and asking them why they're there. And so I didn't the, understand the... that like. Where did the alien went? So the first party that was there that got the dude, he, uh, the face hugger grabbed him. Uh-huh. They they took Bishop. Oh, then, see, I didn't even understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They grabbed Bishop. They took him. Um, and then they get to Anchor Point, and th- that's a different group of people now. But they also have that um, the samples. Uh, See, that's just it. Now I'm thinking on it, and I'm confused because no chestburster comes out of that dude. He died. Yeah, but, but there's no alien. No alien comes out of him, as far as I know. They don't explain that an alien comes out of him. Yeah, I, I, I just, got I got really confused about the two different things that were happening at the same time. Like the yeah. two different, like because one party has bishop. <laughs> yeah, they take bishop and they they like they must have took the, the alien samples. too, right? Right, I think, but I think they get the samples from bishops, from from inside of bishop. Yeah, they do, and they start like, um, they start messing with them, trying to grow well, them. Because in they in this world, the alien stuff is like the ultimate. It's like the ultimate freaking biological weapon. Right, what, and, well, every everybody's after it. Yeah, because a lot of stuff in the the prequel alien movies, like uh, oh, like Prometheus. Yeah, like Prometheus kind of explains that that. They think the aliens were created for one specific purpose, and these people think it's like a a weapon. So they try to weaponize it right away, you know, like yeah, we almost were. immediately. And it immediately backfires. Go figure. <laughs> Th- this is the part where I start to have a lot of issues. Like they're testing on it, and this guy's in the lab, like doing work, and this lady comes in, and he's like, "Whoa, you're not wearing a chemical suit. You could be infected." And then instantly the glass breaks for, like, no reason. Yeah, I thought that was weird, too. They don't even talk about it. It just breaks. Like, yeah. what? And then that's, they, like, cut away they, from that place, right? They, like, don't talk about it for a while. That's happening at Anchor Point, where the right. Sulaco dock. Yeah, so they get these samples. I don't remember what the samples are, though. But they have alien DNA. They're just in the it. alien DNA, and they mix it with human DNA. Right, because they test it. And then immediately... It has like an embryo. Yeah, like really, really fast. Yeah, but the glass breaks and this little bit of gas is released, and that gas is what ends up being that embryo's way of like moving to a new host. And so they said so they send Bennick back though before all this happens. Bishop, Bishop <laughs> dude. It's fine. I don't know why I keep thinking Bennick. It's fine. It's because now. Now we brought so much attention to the fact that you're saying it wrong. Yeah, you're right, and then I'm just going to keep doing it. <laughs> so they send a bishop back, and they, like, fixed him. And so but he goes back, and then he tells them that they're, t- they're like, doing the experiments on the, on the alien DNA. And then they, like, try and call the other place, right? And then they don't pick up. Yeah, and that the people who put bishop back together, they also took like everything out of his mind right his his artificial mind and that's also what led them to be like oh we have to weaponize this for sure and yeah so then where the so anchor point tries to call those people it's like the soviets i'm just gonna call them the soviets from now on because it really is like that it's like the cold war basically i feel like in space and uh yeah, so they try to, to hail these people on the radio and be like, hey, you know, after Bishop came back, they're like, whoa, that's weird. Let's call them. And nobody answers. Like, nobody will answer. And uh, then it cuts over there, and it's because whatever alien they were working on clearly got out, and it's just like killing everyone on their ship. Well, it's it's weird, though. It's like a virus, right? Kind of, yeah. So in, yeah. Anyway, they like make their little party together, and they like they want to go over there, and because they they figure the alien got out too, which is a little suspicious to me that they would immediately be like, oh well, obviously that didn't go well. <laughs> we have to go fix it. Yeah. Yeah, and they go there with nothing. 
they didn't go they go with no arms or anything like that yeah and then they uh before they go before they even get to that ship uh the soviet ship the one lady she like runs to the to a jettison ship jettisons herself and then a nuclear bomb from the uh, the rest of the soviets like hits that ship and destroys it because they were like, I'm sure they called their home base and were like, oh, uh, yeah, we screwed up. And don't let this ship land because it'll kill everyone. Because the they send the Sulaco away because Newt gets on it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so that's what that's what you're thinking, though, is the the anchor point doesn't have that many people on it because it's like a. Uh, it's like a study vessel because yeah, it's it like has a research like a, station. Yeah, because it it's has kind of a, like exactly like in Solaris. Yeah, because it also has like a giant, um, like nature preserve on like the a ship. terrarium. Or yeah, what would you call it? Like a biodome. That's yeah. There you go. That's what those people are there doing essentially is studying that stuff. And so yeah, there's so not there's there's lots point. of biomass on this place. Right. So they send the Sulaco away with like certain people that they, they go away. And no, they don't they go to to uh, save Ripley because isn't Ripley still there? Because she, she was like sleeping or something. Because she's like passed out. She well, maybe they don't send the Sulaco away. Am I mis? Am I misunderstanding? No, dude, they I send, don't know. I'm definitely confused about it. <laughs> they send Newt away. Newt leaves. Yeah, she goes away on some ship though. Yeah, they have like that touching little moment with her and oh man, the yeah. Marine guy. Either way, we also forgot to mention there were two like shady government people that came on board too. Oh yeah, <laughs> and essentially, you know, screwed this all up for everybody. Oh yeah, they have because... like a like a, a weapons case, and they're not supposed yeah. to have weapons. Yeah, and they're like the only one with weapons once all the shit hits the fan. What happened ends up happening to them? Uh, well, the one dude, the the gal is the one you were talking about. She's the one who walks in, right? And then the thing breaks. Oh uh, yeah, it it is her. Yeah, so like we were talking about, she gets infected with this new strain of stuff, and essentially, instead of needing a chest burster like previous aliens did, this literally just mutates her DNA into something else. Yeah, and they, so they make hybrids. Yeah, they but, just and, call and the mutation hybrid. happens super duper fast. Yeah, because she even gets decontaminated and all this after her exposure, and it doesn't matter. She still transforms. Is is she the one when they show up that transforms like right in front of them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it's like super weird because they. It was also really stupid. They're like, she's like yelling at them, and then she starts. They they're like she's having a seizure. But literally, she's transforming, and no one like gets away from her. They're just like, "Oh my god, she's turning into the hybrid," and they all just like stand there until one. Yeah, th- I, that was thought that was stupid too. They're literally all talking about what's happening, and they're not doing. They're not moving at all. And that's the one thing a dramatization does kind of weird is because you can hear her changing, but pe- the people are still talking. I mean, they're talking like they're putting inflection in their voice, but it still sounds like they're standing right next to her. Like, yeah. You know, you so either way, she turns into the hybrid and just starts killing people because now she's an alien. And see, I, this is one thing I didn't understand either. There's like, there's like weird stuff all over the ship, too. Yeah, like, because there's also like this goo, gooey mass that I'm assuming the hybrid is putting out because now the way I figured it is now the hybrid doesn't need the chest bursters so it's putting out this goo and that is like the way it's passing on it's oh, right because there's people can co- cocooned in it yeah so that's how it's like passing on its new virus it's kind of confusing towards the end actually now that i'm yeah. thinking about it and so they they like show up and they they like don't have any weapons or anything <laughs> which is so stupid to me oh yeah it's terrible oh they it's... have the one hicks they have hicks's stuff well, but yeah, but he finds that there because there's like an old Soviet suit, and the, all right. Soviet suits have weapons built into them, so it has like a handgun. 
See, that's it's like a literal gun, like an arm piece that he has to wear that shoots. Yeah, and that suit that they find though, that's where the chest burster came out because there is a regular xenomorph on board. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. There is a regular but xenomorph. On board. But Dude, know. you know where that came from? I think actually is that guy in the beginning that got is the chest. That? I uh, think that's where it came from. I think those guys were the the Soviets. That okay. Yeah, they were the Soviets. I just couldn't remember hearing about that dude's chest bursting open. But I don't think they talk about it. They, I mean, that's like all they mention is that there's like a suit of Soviet armor on the ship. Yeah, that's got to be. He can't. It. He can't use the whole thing because the chest is all messed up and the helmet's messed up. Right, because the chest burster came out yeah. of it. Yeah, because there is a normal xenomorph. Because it's eventually, kind of what happens is a lot of people die. Yeah, but... I mean, you can cut to. Oh my God, we have to blow up the station. They, yeah, they go to blow up we... the station. Yeah. Tons, of, almost all the characters die except for the main ones, and then they like go to they go like going to leave the ship, and they like you know they had to go on their quest to make sure they could leave, so they had their oxygen and their suits and stuff like that, and then like a and then like a real xenomorph comes out of another ship, right? That like yeah, it, like, it's out of like in. those. I think it's out of those uh, the two government people's ship that they came on. Yeah, and it comes out, and like a hybrid shows up. And and they're like, oh man, they're so they're gonna die. There's two things there. And then the alien fights the hybrid for some reason. Yeah, the yeah the xenomorph like fights with the hybrid because apparently they don't like each other. Yeah, but why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they go after the people first? I, I, don't I didn't understand that at all. I, I didn't either because xenomorph in all the other ones it's hyper aggressive towards like humans. Well, so. it's hyper aggressive and it's super stealthy and it just murders you out of nowhere. Yeah, it's like the perfect killing machine. Yeah, like exactly. They, I think they mentioned that in the book. It has acid blood. <laughs> yeah. Which is... the hybrid don't have. This is a little off topic, but when I went down that rabbit hole of videos about Alien, in the first Alien, the original design, so you know how the Xenomorph has like a mouth, right? But no like nose. Or and eyes. Then it, and then it turns, and no eyes, but it turns into like the smooth shell above its uh, mouth. Mm-hmm. In the original design, behind that smooth shell, it's like clear, and you can see a human skull inside of it. Oh, just, dude, that would have been just, way creepier. Yeah, because it's just from like the nose up, so it's in the position as if the face of the xenomorph is like where the human face sits right behind it. That it looked so scary. It looked really cool. <laughs> I don't. Know, I think the design is actually pretty good on the xenomorphs. Yeah, I. I think so too, and that's this hybrid thing they were discussing. I don't even really know how to picture it because Me, dude, they don't really talk about it that much. No, they don't so really. Like, oh no, it's turning into a hybrid, and they're like, "What's a hybrid?" And it's like clearly it's a human alien combination, and that's all they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you hear some like wet like slapping sounds. Yeah, so like, <laughs> yeah, like clear transforming sounds. The lady screaming, yeah. and yeah, you hear like flop, 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 flop. Like, I have no idea what's happening. Yeah, are those tentacles? Does yeah, yeah. Does it have extra and, is this thing like What's a happening? flying bat? I have no idea. <laughs> but the I, xenomorph. I mean, I mean that to me, once the aliens and stuff start showing up, is when this book goes so downhill. Yeah, for sure. That's and the way they get them there is that's kind of where the story breaks down too. Because like, like we said, it's almost like. Uh, ex machina type thing. Well, we need an yeah. alien on this ship too. So now this happens. <laughs> well, I mean, you can really tell why this was an unused script, if you ask me. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's not. Because it's full of plot holes and it's definitely like they didn't like trim it down like they would have done for a movie because there are a lot of scenes that are pointless. Big time. And yeah. to be honest, this might have done better as like a fully fleshed out, thought out book. I mean, yeah. It has enough content to make like a good, you know, 10, 15 hour book. So that's just, I think that's just kind of my opinion about it. But and, and Bishop, to me, is he steals the show. He's the best part of the whole thing. Yeah, for the sure. Parts, the parts when he takes over and narrates are really good. And whoever narrates Bishop does a really good job. Does a really, really, really good job. I would say they probably do. I mean, there's so many actors, so I can't really say, like... And some of them literally only have, like, two lines, and then they die. So, like, <laughs> I don't really know all... I don't even know them all, but, yeah, I would say that Bishop, he does a really good job. And then the one who does... 
the lady who does Ripley does a good job because she sounds just like the original actress. From yeah, but she's movie. in it for like fucking three lines. Yeah, because she's like in it when they do the recap and then she goes to sleep and then something happens. So she stays asleep. And to me, to me, I think that's part of the reason why this was probably an unused script. It's because Ripley's not even in it. Yeah, that could be too. <laughs> Which is dumb. <laughs> Yeah, I mean this like like we said like a thousand times. The dramatization is good. The story is not very good. Yeah, I'd say the story is very weak. It's definitely where this one falls very short in my opinion, so cuz it kind of follows like once they show up on the ship it's like, "Oh, you know exactly what's going to happen." They're going to yeah. they're going to they have to do this thing and people are going to get picked off on the way. Obviously, they have to to spread out so they have to do this they have to do different things. They're going to run into the alien. They're going to try and leave. It's going to be close, but they're still going to make it away. Right. And that's kind of what I was saying is, to me, it felt like all the other ones. Like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Even the prequels. Pretty cookie cutter. It's, yeah, it's all kind of – once. You, I mean, I like the alien movies, and I think they're cool, and I think they're super well done because I love their the effects that they use in those, especially since they're almost all practical effects in the first Yeah, which movie. I have a lot of respect for. Oh, big time. I mean, hugely. I have a ton of respect for visual effects artists as well, but to do practical effects, in my opinion, is just amazing. And I, I know everybody likes to shit on this movie, but I actually really like Prometheus. I like Prometheus, too. I just like... I mean, Prometheus uses a lot of... It does use some uh, practical effects, but it's also a lot of CG, which is okay, oh, yeah, because yeah, it's, very, sure. it's very good CG. Um but what I was going to kind of get to is, I mean, Prometheus falls into this same trap, essentially. It's like oh, the yeah. same story. I mean, <laughs> you know. In space, basically trapped somewhere. Something goes wrong, have to leave, people die. Yeah, people are going to die on the way. And then a few people are going to survive. And they're going to leave the very ending clipped together just well enough so you think there might be another one. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> But definitely, uh, if you already have Audible and yeah. you got two and a half hours to spare. Yeah, I mean, you might as well. Yeah, just just listen to this one, especially if you've never heard of dramatization because this one is done well, like we've mentioned right. several times. So, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty much done. You got uh, I am to too. Right? This, this was going to be a turbo episode. I think we were going a little over on that timeline, but oh, I think yeah. all in all, it's still eh. – <laughs> Yeah, we're going over the arbitrary rules we set for ourselves. Yeah, the exact that's exactly what they are. But um, so yeah, what uh, what are we gonna be doing next time? Do we have an, Do we know what yes. we're doing? Yeah, next time we're gonna do a Night of the Seven Kingdoms, which is a spinoff series of the Game of Thrones world, and it's actually by George R. R. Martin. Yeah, I don't know who yeah. narrates it right off the top of my head. Well, we're gonna get into all that. Um. And so what we'd like to start doing, we've been trying to do this. I don't remember if we've stuck to it perfectly. I know we did it the last two times. Yeah, so we'll try to mention what's coming up next to give people a chance to listen to it. But it's only going to be about a week in between. So if if anybody listening would like us to try to schedule a little bit further out in advance so that your average person has more time to listen to stuff, well, because I because I kind of want to keep the the thing that we've been doing of doing like a turbo and then like a longer book. Yeah, I, yeah alternating. That, that works pretty good too because usually the turbo books are shorter books, so it right. helps us out too. Because because I mean, I, eventually I kind of want to get into the Game of Thrones and stuff like that. And I know some of your favorite books are also really really long, like yeah. upwards of thirty hours. And and I I would like to be able if you guys want to listen ahead of time, then that would be you would have plenty of time. So. Yeah, we need to work on like a schedule that we can keep a long way out. Yeah. So, uh, again, if if anybody's listening and would like us to do it that way, drop us a uh, drop us. Yeah, email. you'd be the first one to email us. You would be the first. So the email is uh, kotpl dot pod at gmail dot com, and you can just drop us a line over there, and we will uh, would love to hear from you. And we are also on iTunes now. We've made it, boys. That's right. That's right. We <laughs> we have we have ascended to the next step of podcasting. 
So yeah, so we're not just on SoundCloud anymore. We're actually on iTunes. I mean, they are in both places. So I guess if you like the SoundCloud better, which I don't think anybody does, but if you do, it's still there. Uh, yeah, and you can go to our Facebook too at Nice of the Pages Library. It's our Facebook page. And our Twitter. I have yet to tweet anything, but I, I've, I've kind of forgot about it, if I'm honest. It's, well, now you can nice. tweet this. Yeah. Just, just finished Alien 3, boys. Go listen. Yeah, perfect. Right there. I wrote it there. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag KOTPO. Um, yeah, okay. So, anybody who stuck with us this long, we uh, we appreciate you listening. And uh, we now we can kind of, since we got the, you know, the iTunes and stuff, we can do the normal thing that everybody else does. You know, please go over there and like and favorite and all that jazz. So, yeah, drop us five star reviews. But that's right, five star ratings. You know, apparently it really helps out. We don't know any of this yeah, stuff yet. We have we absolutely no idea. <laughs> we <laughs> haven't <laughs> climbed the ladder far enough for that yet. And I want our first piece of hate mail, too. I really want that. I don't know why, but I do. I have a feeling it's not far out. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm okay with it. Some angry keyboard warrior is at... He's hard yeah. at work at it right now, I feel like. <laughs> you guys are dumb. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you for being our first piece of hate mail. <laughs> all right. Well, I think, um, I'm, I think that's all I got, Ryan. What about you? No, that's it. And it sounds like your audio is starting to go. So with that, we will uh, catch you guys in the next one. Bye.